Cult Following is a podcast that studies the personalities and common traits of cult leaders and their followers. Get the real story behind these infamous and oftentimes tragic cults from a new perspective, through exhaustive research and from interviews with people that were there. Available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Life is a quest for logic and reason. It is a quest to find balance between science and faith. Life is a quest for knowledge and understanding, but most importantly, it's a quest for personal discovery. Whatever your quest, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom. Welcome to Quest. Hi, Dr. Katie. Welcome back to the Quest podcast. Hey, Todd. How how have you been? Good. It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a while since we've chatted. It it has been a while. Yeah. So, you know, uh, for those that are, that are new listeners to this, uh, Dr. Katie is my co-host of the cult following podcast. She's also been a guest just solo on, uh, on quest in several, several seasons ago. I think when we left off, uh, in our last, just regular me, you interview on quest, we were going to administer a narcissistic personality disorder test to me, and we never got to that. So I still don't know if I'm a narcissist. <laughs> that's, well, that's that's really too bad that we haven't been able to do that yet. <laughs> I think that that's something that we really need to work on making happen. I, I think it's a special episode down the line. I want to know for myself, and you probably want to know too. But um, but we're not here to talk about me, even though it's my podcast. We'll. We're going to talk about cult following because we have a new season coming soon, season three, and I'm excited about it. I am thrilled about it. I'm very, very excited. I'm very happy to be back. I'm ready to dive into, you know, just everything that that we touched on in our previous episodes and um, and learn about some new cults and uh, maybe you know some other things that depending on your outlook, you may or may not believe our cults. Right. For sure. We definitely have an interesting season and uh, you know, you and I did the first season and it was, it was, I think exceeded our expectations. People that, that tuned into it. We really got a lot of, we really got a lot of followers very fast. And then I lost you for season two because you you're in your practice, you know, you're building your, uh, your psychology practice. So I didn't have you for those few seasons of uh, those few episodes of season two, which I had with co-hosts. We covered UFO cults and uh, I had a Catholic priest come on and we discussed Christian cults and other things. So really there was a definitely a different kind of dynamic with those guest hosts, but you're back in season three. And and I just want you to tell the listeners just a little bit about what cult following is about, because I think we really created an interesting dynamic between the two of us. Yes, I agree. Uh, I think, you know, Todd is coming at this as somebody who has a background in religion um, and spirituality. And so that is kind of the lens that you are are looking at, at things through and looking at the cults through and the different people that we might identify within the cults that were... Um, you know, prominent members or leaders. And I am looking at things through the lens of psychology and being a clinician. And so, you know, what, what pieces of these individuals' personalities or just other psychological attributes or traits are, are playing into how they became a cult leader or why people might follow sure. cults or why people might join cults. Right. I always use this example. You know, one of the episodes I, I really like is kind of how we kicked it off with Charles Manson. And it was really fascinating for me when we really dug into young Charles Manson and we really kind of figured out the stew that made him what he was. So much of it came from his childhood. <clears throat> Certainly there was a lot of experimentation that he did, uh, uh, in California, but so much of his early life is what you never really heard out there. You know, that's, that's not what 
sells TV shows. It's the murders that sold TV shows. But we found a, we uncovered a lot of evidence to support what his childhood was like and what his family environment was like. And even, you know, some places, you know, his uh, kind of the uh, the boy's home that he was in there for a while and even his incarceration. You know, we uncovered a lot of stuff there before he was ever, ever starting a cult. And then when we got into the Manson family, the same for those people. And, you know, uh, I'm always fascinated in kind of the new religious movement, the new thought leader element of this. And then you are a psychologist. And, uh, you know, I think there's just no disputing the science behind what might have been happening in the minds of those people that, that join a family like that. And uh, that's what people can expect in the episodes uh, as, as we move forward here into season three. And this is the first season where we're having interviews. So that's what's really going to be exciting is we are going to be having people on that were there. And with that being said, we have another special announcement. We have a new host coming on. So we have a third person joining our team, and she's here with us now. And I'd like to welcome formally and officially to our team, Dr. Katie, Lisa Thomas. Welcome to Quest, Quest Podcast, Lisa. Hi, thank you. I'm so excited to be here and to be joining the team. Um, I'm really excited about the upcoming season, and I think we have a really interesting mix of cults to discuss and some great people lined up to interview. Lisa's joining us as a host and a researcher, possibly a referee, Dr. Katie, in case you and I get into any arguments, she can be there to kind of break it up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, luckily we are not in the same place, so no uh, scuffles, <laughs> but mental scuffles. That, that, actually, that should be interesting. At I've least. known Lisa for a while. We actually butt heads on a few of these topics. It might be me and her getting into it in this. I don't know. But I, I think the fresh dynamic will be really fun. Um but Lisa, you've had plenty of, of kind of explorations on your own uh, already because you do adventure travel, which is really exciting. And I've known you for a long time as you've done this. Tell the listeners a little bit about all the exciting places that you've been to and kind of the stuff you have coming up. Hmm. Um, some of my favorite trips, I think I've been to the Amazon three times. I absolutely love out there just like being in the middle of nature. Um I've done a really cool one. I went to Kenya and we went on safari on horseback during the Great Migration where we actually fo followed um, the herd during the Great Migration. We covered about 125 miles in six days. Um, I did a really cool trip to Egypt here recently, right towards the end of COVID. Um, been all over Europe and yeah, Central America. My, my next trip, the... The fishing trip to the Amazon? Is that what's coming up next? Uh, that is not planned yet, but that is one I definitely want to do. I want to go back to the Amazon again and essentially do kind of like a, a river monsters fishing trip where I just go fishing in the Amazon and catch some river monsters. That's exciting. I'm hoping to get Lisa to do some dark tourism with us for future episodes where we maybe go to the site of where Waco happened. You know, who knows? <laughs> That would be, be that would be great. If we do that, then we have to try to find a place nearby to record the podcast together, I think. Yeah. On the site, on the site, I think. Um, so, you know, I wanted let's let's let the audience get to know Lisa a little bit. So I'm curious, you know, Lisa, first off, what's your interest in cults or high control groups? What got you interested in this kind of thing? Is it like everyone? It's just it's on Netflix and you watch one one day and go, this is twisted. Um. I think what I find the most fascinating is how someone is able to convince people to follow them and kind of that they have all the answers and they're what you have been looking for, especially people that might be um, like looking for a higher purpose or, you know, trying to figure out who they are. And I feel like cult leaders just have a knack for kind of picking them out. But it's also really interesting, I think, the different tactics they use to recruit them and to pull them in and, you know, what they use to try to keep them or a lot of times it ends up with like isolation and just kind of finding ways to dominate people, whether through psychological manipulation or pressure. For sure. So, 
and they just keep happening. It's, you know, like it's this, it's the same stuff over and over and over again. Right now, we don't really cover very current, current Colts on Colt following. We usually are talking about Colts where the, the worst has already happened. <clears throat> um, and there's many reasons for that <laughs> because yeah, current active Colts are businesses. And if we defame them or we um, criticize them and they lose money, they can, they can sue our podcast. And uh, <laughs> so we don't cover, but it's easy to find those that are out there. And it's the same things over and over and over again. And people still fall for this stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I think Dr. Katie, you and I have talked before about multi-level marketing and the MLMs and how this stuff just stays out there. And then people don't realize these kind of these pyramid schemes are just repackaged. What, how would you speak to that? I agree. It's funny that you brought that up because that was the first thing that just popped into my head while you were uh, talking to Lisa there. I think there is a lot of crossover. You know, we've seen some cults more recently that have an MLM flair. Um, and I think it's an easy way to get people interested without coming right out and saying that this is a cult or coming right out and saying that this is something that is based on religion or spirituality in, in some form or fashion, right? You can kind of market it as, well, this is, this is a group where you can come and meet with like-minded people and work on becoming a better speaker or presenter or just an overall better business person or what, you know, whatever the, the angle of it might be. And that gets people in the door. And then once they're in the door, then the other pieces can start to fall in line. Sure. Um, and, and then it might be a little less clear for the people coming in to see once they're in the midst of it, oh, this actually is, is a cult. So question for both of you. And, and, you know, just for the listeners, this has been covered before on cult following and I've, I've discussed it many times on quest, but just for, for, for you to just your quick explanation, the term cult, I feel is fairly ambiguous, but what makes a cult? When would you call one? When, when would you call something a cult? I'll jump in. I think one of the biggest things, which we, I guess we've all kind of touched on this so far, but, um, you know, like Lisa was just mentioning, there's usually some kind of an enigmatic, charismatic leader that is heading things up that may or may not have some grandiosity involved with the way that they present, the way that they see themselves, the way that they see their role in society or within that group of people. And then there are a group of people that are a little more subservient to that person. Um, and there's kind of this idea that we're all working towards this, this same general goal, whatever that looks like, depending on the type of cult. Um, but that, you know, this person, like Lisa said, is, is the person that has the answers, right? They've found something that other people don't know about yet. They've found something that is new and a different take and something that can help people in some way. Uh, that's that's kind of my generalized idea of of how I would explain a cult. I don't, Lisa. Do you have any other thoughts or anything else I that that, I, I that mean, kind of I jumps pretty, out when you think about cults? I agree with Dr. Katie. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. I can't say exi- exactly when I would say this is officially a cult, but I I think it's easier for me because generally when I'm thinking about that it's something in the past and so you have way more data to go off of and you kind of see all the signs that are there and you can look at the totality of evidence and so I think it's much easier but if I were to meet one today or you know have somebody try to recruit me I don't I don't know I mean I, I don't know exactly when I draw the line and say this is a cult I would definitely be looking for the signs I guess let me throw some examples out there Let's just throw some some faces and names out there because I think this is interesting. Dr. Katie, you seem the needle seems to be pointing for you a little bit more toward the person. A cult is, you know, the cult and the person could be synonymous, right? I my needle points toward it's the doctrine more than anything. Um, but let's throw a couple names out. 
L. Ron Hubbard, L. Ron Hubbard and, you know, Dianetics and the stuff that he wrote, right? So it's man and it's doctrine. Charles Manson, just the man, right? Hugh Hefner, the, no doctrine with pornography, right? But Hefner would fit all of those kind of, you know, uh, kind of the what you what you mentioned, Dr. Katie, in terms of kind of that big, bold personality that people gravitate toward. Um, so uh, I'm so I'm curious, is it really do you think that you call something a cult because of the leader or do you think it's the doctrine or does it have to be both? Or is it just ambiguous, like we said? That That's a really good question, Todd. I think for me. I feel like it's a little bit of a muddy area. I think the lines are blurred sometimes when I think about it, like Lisa was saying, a lot of the times when we're thinking about cults, these are cults that we have a lot of information on. They were formed long ago They're They may or may not still be um, together or may have disbanded. Uh, but I think that when I think about those, older cults or some of the the ones that we all have a lot of knowledge about, like Charles Manson, even if there wasn't a specific doctrine, I still think that he had some level of, you know, structured ideas and thinking that could potentially still be called a doctrine on some level. So for me, I think that it, it's the person and the doctrine. Uh, but I do think that there's there's a gray area. Let me throw you a couple more curveballs while we're at it. Is there a cult of Tupperware? Is there a cult of Avon? Is there a cult of fraternities and sororities? Um, you know, what about those things? What about the cult of musicians? We've talked about this at, at dinner one night, I think, where I talked about, is there a cult of Taylor Swift? Is there a cult of sports? You know, uh, Katie, you're Lexington, Kentucky, University of Kentucky. That's like a freaking cult of sports. They love everything about their sports, right? <laughs> is there a cult of sports? Like, you know, is it fair to use the word cult for those things too, even though there might not be a figurehead attached to them? I think for me, there's some, when I think about cults, I think about extremism as okay. well. Good. And so there's some extremist either ideals or views or behaviors um, that that go along with that. And then that ends up being detrimental to the people that are a part of the cult um, on some level, either the group itself or individuals separately or, you know, the, the person that's lead, leading it even. So I think for me that that's what jumps out when I yeah. think about cults. Lisa, are you in the cult of Taylor Swift? Um, I wouldn't say I'm officially a Swifty, but I do listen to some of her music. Be careful yeah. of that doctrine she's preaching. It's going to get you. <laughs> that's what I was going to say, watch out, Todd. Don't send the Swifties after us already. Well, yeah, that's right. They'll cancel us quick. Um, yeah. So, you know, just kind of, a, a, this is a great lead into what our new season looks like. Uh, Dr. Katie, when do our, when does our season three start? So we are actively recording now and we will have our new episodes out in January, 2024. So we are all very, very excited to get those out and, you know, hopefully get some people back that have listened before, even though we've had a little time off and really get the ball rolling um, and have a, a bunch of new episodes for you in January. Well, you know, just kind of coming off of our, our, our recent conversation here, we have Waco coming up, Jonestown, Nexium, Playboy, several lesser known cults that people might not have heard of. And, you know, just looking at uh, Waco and Jonestown, Christian cults right there out of the gate. So they bring a religious doctrine along with charismatic leaders with um, with uh, Jim Jones and, and David Koresh. And um, it's a very interesting dynamic versus uh, um, Keith Raniere at Nexium, which was, you know, business self-help that sort of devolved into a whole lot of other debauchery. Um, and then, you know, what you're hearing uh, just more recently is the cult of Playboy and what it was like there and people that uh, were taken advantage of there or, uh, you know, held in cult-like conditions with their enigmatic leader of Hugh Hefner. So it will be very interesting conversations and great interviews coming up that everyone can look forward to. 
Lisa, what are you most excited about with this new season? I think I'm most excited about the interviews. I think it's going to be really interesting uh, to hear their point of view and, and to like truly try to see it through their eyes as opposed to the way that I might perceive it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Katie, tell everyone where they can find cult following out there on the interwebs. You can follow cult following at join the cult following on Instagram. And I believe it's the same on Facebook as well. So follow us there. Uh, We should have some updates on there as well as, as we get closer to that January drop date. Um, And, you know, we maybe will post some other, other cool things on there in the meantime as well. But yep. At the cult, at Join, Join the, the cult, cult following, following. Yeah, yep. on Instagram and Facebook. And, and we're available anywhere you listen to podcasts. So go ahead and subscribe and follow us. And, um, and I think we might even have a few video episodes this year. We'll see. We, we've been audio only for so long, but uh, I think we're ready to maybe do a few, especially with the interviews. They're very compelling. So you might see some of our, uh, our interviews on YouTube. We'll see. Yeah, it's but, a great things to look out for. But Dr. Katie, Lisa, thanks for joining me today and uh, kind of teasing the new season. And uh, by the time this airs, it will just be a few weeks out from when uh, when we get season three. So uh, everyone uh, go like and uh, follow and subscribe and uh, look forward to my great co-hosts here very shortly. But you two, thanks for joining me tonight. And um, we will talk soon. OK. All right. Thanks so much, Todd. Bye bye. Thanks. Metacortex Publishing hopes that you've enjoyed this presentation. Please take a moment to listen to some other podcast offerings from Metacortex Publishing. The No Earthly Explanation podcast investigates the things that are unexplainable. Hosted by world-renowned investigative researcher Donald R. Schmidt and scientist Ellie Ringo. Follow them as they look for evidence for things that have no earthly explanation. Available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Hi, I'm Father Daniel DePlantis, a Catholic priest, martial artist, and host of the Karate Priest Podcast. Have you ever wondered what the church teaches about different topics? Are you a martial arts enthusiast or just someone who wants to learn more about martial arts? I'd like to invite you to join me and many guests on my podcast as we cover topics of faith, everyday living, and martial arts on the Karate Priest Podcast. Rose, the religious hippie, and I host the podcast A Catholic's Perspective. Join me every two weeks as I release episodes targeted towards helping young Catholics navigate their ever-changing secular world while staying strong in their faith. Whether you are a Catholic or not, all are welcome here. So if this is something that interests you, feel free to tune in. You can find A Catholic's Perspective on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. I hope to see you there. Bye! Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please be sure to rate and review this episode. This podcast is produced by Todd Fisher and Anthony Smith and is distributed by Metacortex Publishing. This podcast is copyright. Any previously trademarked or copyright content is used by permission. Information and opinions stated in this podcast should not be construed as medical advice. Please be sure to visit the official website for Metacortex Publishing at metacortexpublishing.com or find us on social media for other unique content.